Hello everyone, this is Dr. David. You can call me Margarita. Today we're gonna to do part one of the topic test taking strategies. This is a really common request among students and I do teach this outside of YouTube and they always seem to give me very positive feedback so I figured I'd do a video on it. One of the things that I have to tell you is that test taking strategies are a crucial component of any test that you take when you're in nursing school or in any type of field, but specifically when you're taking the NCLEX. There is a limited amount of time, just like when you are in the nursing school that you're taking a test for your class. So you have to make sure that you're using your time efficiently. You cannot just waste the time because they do give you, let's say, a minute and a half per question. But they give you that minute and a half for a reason. It's not because they just want you to answer the questions within 20, 10 seconds. It's because you need to strategize how you answer this question in order to get the best response. The number one thing that I tell my students is you have to cover the answers. When you're taking tests in school, I know that a lot of you take them in an iPad, but if, you can, if you're given a piece of scrap paper or something that you can make notes on, cover those answers. Why do you think I say this? Well, the best thing is to start out with a blank slate. A lot of times students rush through the questions, look at the answers, and then now their thoughts are very limited to those four or five or select all the applied choices. But if you start with a blank slate, you can think about all of those things that, your, that question's actually asking you. So I'm going to ask you to cover your answers and I'm going to be posting uh, some questions in my website and I want you to trial these techniques to see if they work for you. And if they work for you, send me an email or write it down in the comments. But again, make sure that you're covering your answers in order for you to be able to think about all those possibilities that could be before actually limiting your thoughts. The second thing that I'm gonna tell you is read the question. You are given a minute and a half or two minutes per question for a reason. So you wanna make sure that you read the question, not skim through the question, read the question. A lot of you, and I'm number one to have done this, is that I'm reading the question so fast that I might miss a key word. And that key word might change my whole answer in, in its entirety. So you wanna make sure you're reading the question. But remember, as you read the questions, those answers need to be covered because I want you to focus on what is it exactly that that question is asking you. Start out with that blank slate so that you can think of all those possible choices that it could be before actually limiting yourself to those answers that are, that are put there for you. The third thing I'm gonna ask you after you've covered the answers, which takes you half a second, you read the question. You wanna take about 20 seconds to read that question. Now you're gonna take an additional 20 seconds to think about the topic that is being asked. You don't know how many times I have students given tests back to us to grade when the question was a cardiac question and just because the question mentioned the pole socks, the student went ahead and picked a respiratory answer. That is not correct. So if the question is asking you about a cardiac uh, issue or a uh, respiratory issue or a GI or GU or neuro issue, you want to make sure that you're focusing on those issues when you're choosing your answers. So you're going to cover your answers, you're going to read the question to make sure that you truly understand what is the focus here. Is it a priority question or is it a, a cardiac question or is it a neuro question? And then you're going to take 20 seconds to think about the topic that's being asked. I'll give you an example. So let's say that the question is regarding PEG tubes. So you know that the NCLEX is going to test you on how safe you are. How is it that you're going to be a safe practicing nurse? So it's going to ask you questions towards that. So if the question relates to PEG tube and whatever the question is, I'm going to think about what are all those things that I know about PEG tubes and patients. And I'm not looking at the answers. So in my 20 seconds after I've read the question, I'm going to say, okay, well, safety points with PEG tubes and patients. Well, one thing I'm going to assess the site of the patient. That's something that I can do by just looking at it. Is the PEG tube leaking? Is it um, oozing? Does it have a smell? Then, before I even do anything with that PEG tube, is my patient in the right position? So you want to make sure that patient is within 30 to 45 degrees. So I'm thinking about all this in my head. So, okay, the site looks well. I'm going to make sure proper patient positioning before I even do anything with the PEG tube. 
then if I have to administer medications, I want to make sure that is there residual because if there's a certain amount of residual, some facilities have it that if it's above 100 or 150, you have to make sure you check your policies. You need to stop and you cannot continue. You have to let the provider know. So I'm going to check, is there any residual from any past feeding that the patient had earlier in the day or any other medications that they might have received before my shift? Because if there isn't any residual, then I'm going to move on to do the task that I have to do. For example, if the order is is to give medications, then after I have assessed the site, make sure that there's proper positioning of the patient, that the head of the bed is elevated between 30 to 45 degrees. I'm gonna also check residual to make sure that the patient's tolerating the feedings that are being given or the medications. And if there is no residual at this point, I'm going to do the action that I was ordered to do. If it's either to connect to a feed, through a pump, or to provide medications. Then another safety is after you do these tasks, so after you've given the medication or the feed, I wanna make sure that the patient stays elevated, the head of the bed elevated, for at least an hour after I did my task. So if I gave a feeding or I gave a medication administration, I'm gonna make sure that head of the bed is elevated at 30 to five degrees in order to prevent aspiration. If I was going to hang a continuous feeding, I also know as one of my safety checks that the patient should be at all times with the head elevated between 30 to 5 to 45 degrees because just like yourself, you're not going to eat while you're laying supine on your bed because you have a risk of choking or aspirating. So those are all the safety points that I want to make sure I go over in my head before I look at the answer choices. And guess what? A lot of times, and I'm going to say it between 95 to 99% of the time, you already have figured out the answer because you were able to take those 20, you can even take up to 30 seconds to think about all of those safety issues that can happen regarding whatever that question is focusing. If it's a priority question, the same, you can do the same. If it's a blood pressure issue, an anxiety issue, if it's, remember anxiety can happen also if somebody has a PE, you know, they can breathe a little faster. So a lot of times you just have to think about what is it that they're asking? What do I know as a nurse that I should do in case of everything's safety? And then you will be able to figure out this question. So again, make sure you're covering your answers. I want you to have a blank slate. Do not limit your brain's maximum capacity. Read the question so that you can figure out, okay, I didn't miss anything. Don't read it too fast. Make sure you're reading the question. And you wanna take 20 seconds to think about the topic that is being asked. And we went over peg feeds. Cause remember, as a nurse, you wanna make sure that you are safe. The NCLEX is going to test how safe you are to practice. And what better way to test that by giving you those types of scenarios? Well, I hope this was helpful. Look for the part two of this because there's many more strategies that you can use. And I'm hoping that I can help you at least a little bit in your upcoming test. Thank you and have a great rest of your day. Bye.